Okay, let's talk about biological perspectives on personality. Well, if you're thinking about biology, you got to think about the brain and how the brain really is the uh, source, the main source of our personality. So who we are is, uh, is, is essentially, you know, you look at the brain and you can see who we are. Basically, how do we know this? Well, when there are individuals have certain kinds of brain damage, certain areas of the brain, the prefrontal cortex, for example, it can actually change your personality. Think about the case of Phineas Gage, who had that tamping iron shot through his, you know, uh, shot exploding through his uh, brain. You know, he had some personality changes as a result of the damage. Our brain responses also correlate with personality. Certain areas of our brain uh, respond to positive and negative stimuli, and you know people with different personalities might react differently with uh, different parts of the brain to different types of stimuli. Uh, Hans Eysenck uh, was a major contributor to the study of personality from a biological perspective, and um, his idea is that there that Intro, basically looking at differences between introverts and extroverts. Okay, so the extroverts are the more outgoing, sociable people. The introverts are more solitary, quiet, and so on. According to I think there is a difference in terms of how their brain responds to arousal. Specifically, extroverts are not very responsive to stimuli they need to kind of get more stimulation in order to get their brain uh, at the optimal level of arousal. On the other hand, introverts, they're very easily aroused. Kind of almost sounds like, you know, maybe the people who, are, who have high neuroticism too, like easily upset. But basically, introverts don't like to be around people because it's just too much. It's like too loud for them. So they prefer the quiet, peaceful environments because their brains respond to uh, you know you know less intense you know their their brains are very responsive to intense stimuli stimuli so they don't want stimuli to be intense. Extroverts need that intense stimuli for them to be happy. Another biological uh, theory of personality comes from Gray his uh, reinforcement sensitivity theory. Basically, there are two brain systems according to this theory. There is an activation or an approach system and there is an inhibition system. The behavioral approach or activation system is involved in leading us to rewards. This is the part of the brain that seeks out reward, seek, reward opportunities and directs us to seek them out. So the uh, so this area of so this part of the brain is essentially guiding us towards seeking those rewards. Uh, so if you are a go-getter and you see something you want to take it, that activation system is really hot, is really intensive, intensely active. However, we also have an inhibition system. This involves fear. This involves avoiding danger. So, some of us may run headfirst into danger without considering it, but people with a high active behavioral inhibition system are going to withdraw from those circumstances and be afraid. Now, both of these systems help us survive. You know, we want to be able to seek out those, the rewards that we want, seek out food, seek out uh, the things that we want to get. On the other hand, we also have to watch out for danger. So, sometimes there are things we need to back off from. So the bottom line is, you know, the, the approach system and the inhibition system, there are like two separate systems, but we need both of them to kind of deal with the environment that we're in. Neurotransmitters also play a role in our personality. Uh, apparently, uh, if you are raised by warm caregivers, it is, you know, there's research that suggests that there is an increase in dopamine receptors. So the dopamine receptors are, uh, and again, the dopamine receptors, again, in your brain, they're built through experience, you know, building new receptors. You're branching out of the, of the neuron, of the, of the nervous system. 
So they're branching out, forming new dopamine receptors, and dopamine are those reward-seeking, uh, dopamine in, is involved in reward-seeking as well, so it's involved in that behavioral approach system too. So again, becoming more extroverted, uh, you are sensitive to rewards, you like getting rewards, so you seek them out, and you get them from other people. So that is, uh, so dopamine is very much involved in that particular, uh, in, the, in this particular pattern. Serotonin has been known as a mood neurotransmitter. So your mood is affected by the level of serotonin. If you have a low level of serotonin, you can have much more negative mood, uh, leading to depression. And from a personality point of view, neuroticism. So having this negative mood has to do, yeah, it's been shown to be correlated with a low level of serotonin in, in your brain. So this is another important neurotransmitter related to personality. Personality has been studied from a behavioral genetics point of view. To what extent is personality inherited? To what extent do twins share in their personality? How we are raised, does, does, uh, does how we are raised influence our personality? And there's, um, there is substantial evidence that uh, we are influence that there's a strong genetic influence on personality and on the big five factors as well so basically if you are uh, if you are high in neuroticism and middle of the road in conscientiousness and middle of the road in extroversion and low in openness you might find that your identical twin might share much of these characteristics as well. And we can't necessarily say, well, here's your neuroticism gene, let's just fix that one for you. No, there are, your traits are, are influenced by multiple genes. And again, it's not just biology, it's also environment as well that can nurture you and essentially increase or decrease certain uh, aspects of your personality. So let's take a look at the biological perspective here. Um, you know, you could also look at personality tying into animal learning as well. You know, it's it's good in that, you know, you can see how the brain works. You know, cognitive neuroscience, studying how our brain works and well as our mental processes and how the mental processes in our brain are linked, there's, uh, it's great that we can do this, you know, using the technology that we have and the, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of technology that we'll see in the future that will study the brain even more uh, carefully. Evolutionary theory is also relevant when it comes to personality. We can think about how maybe different personalities, maybe how necessary it is to have different personalities. What would, if we're talking about a society that needs to survive, okay, what if in your society everybody was very low on neuroticism? Everybody was low anxiety. Everybody was a cool customer. Everybody was laid back. Nobody was emotionally reactive to danger. Well, you'd have a society that was at risk because you need neurotic and anxious people to warn everybody else about the real dangers that exist. So, uh, neuroticism as a, tra as a trait serves a very important evolutionary purpose. And we may not, you know, maybe we would rather not be as anxious as we are, for example, if you are high in neuroticism, but there is clearly a, uh, an, uh, a survival purpose for a trait like that. On the other hand, we can't really say cause and effect when it comes to your your biology and your behavior. We don't know whether the biology is caused by environmental circumstances or if it's the effect. Uh, you know whether whether the your personality is your personality equivalent to your biology or is it something else? This is that mind body problem that that we run into again. So again, the bio the biological biological perspective certainly. Are, provide an interesting contribution, but again, just like all the other perspectives, it doesn't tell us everything.